In his new book, The 60% Solution, Rethinking Healthcare, author Todd Furness breaks down healthcare problems and solutions to free the industry to do its job. There are five major constraints. Poor use of primary care, inconsistent accounting and incompatible IT, hidden pricing, restricted health savings accounts, and hyper-regulation. Hello, today's brief is going to be a discussion of President Biden's American Families Plan, which includes a number of value transfers from the federal government or the state government directly to or indirectly to individuals. The Biden administration's stated goals could be reached with many ancillary benefits if those goals were pursued with slightly different tactics. The first issue is how to make the healthcare industry function in a way that provides greater access to services at more affordable rates to healthcare consumers. The plan currently contemplates transfers of cash to individuals for healthcare needs, broadly defined, so that it includes child care, nutrition, family leave, and the extension of the child's tax credit. I think a better way to approach these issues would be to, find, to fund health savings accounts with the same amount of money so that it is tax advantaged when received. If it earns a return while it remains in the health savings account, uh, it is tax advantaged and it's tax advantaged when it's spent on health care costs. Why does this work better? Because the money in the health savings account is owned by that individual who gets to keep whatever's left in the health savings account, not only from one year to the next, but ultimately into perpetuity. In other words, this is a savings account owned by the individual that is designed to pay for health care costs. The benefit is that the individual can pay for health care costs, including fees associated with everything from doctor business to blood tests, with cash from the health savings accounts. By removing insurance companies from the transaction, the costs associated with those fees can be negotiated down, and the savings are retained by the health savings account owner. Further, the information exchange is now better, more beneficial both to the provider and to the individual or patient, so they can better care for themselves. To be an equal opportunity on ta- antagonist, I suggest that we change the taxation of benefits also. It would be fair to assert that tax policy should be consistent both in approach and in application. It, should be, it also should not be regressive in nature, meaning it should not disproportionately affect those with lower incomes more than those with higher incomes. One area where this is not the case is the taxation of health insurance as a benefit that is permitted as a business expense while not being taxed to the recipient. Noted healthcare economist Devin Herrick described my approach and described in my book, The 60% Solution Rethinking Healthcare, as an approach that would correct nearly 80 years of perverse incentives in healthcare. In addition to diffusing some of the inconsistencies in tax policy, it would also bring about a half a trillion dollars to the U.S. Treasury, thus offsetting other costs in the robust set of initiatives set forward in the American Families Plan. Just these two things would significantly change the debate. The goal of this is not to advocate a partisan approach, but rather to propose a way to accomplish the goal in a manner more favorable to all concerned. We should want Americans to have privity of contract and a direct consumer relationship with their care providers and to know the price and be able to negotiate that price of any service rendered to the, by those providers. We should also encourage information flow that comes along with that payment obligation. Further, the costs will go down because of the reduced overhead associated with not having to file claims with insurance companies or wait to be paid by those insurance companies. Our tax policy obscures the costs and disproportionately and adversely affects lower income families. Neither should be intended or seems fair. Creating consistency in tax policy and transparency in insurance costs while increasing the money going into the U.S. Treasury also supports greater health care consumerism. I'm Todd Furness. Thank you for your time today.